Uh, so, uh, good evening everyone. I'm Gerald. I'm a technical evangelist with uh, Microsoft Singapore. So today I'll be talking about uh, doing a production deployment on uh, Azure. So, uh, how many of you all do your own infrastructure deployment? Okay. So, um, where do you all deploy your stuff? Is it AWS? GC? No? Um, Digital Ocean? Yeah, Dio. Dio. Okay. Dio. Azure? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I know Dio is cheap, but I also run Dio myself. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna cover uh, what, what I'm gonna talk about deploying. What, what kind of infrastructure decisions would you make when you, do a, when you do such a deployment and any other considerations when you do such an app deployment? So what is being deployed? We're deploying a simple backend application with a database and a cache. That's it. Simple. Straightforward. Your Django with your, Django with your Postgres, your MySQL with your WordPress. Sim standard one. Okay. For infrastructure, when which when I was when I was when I was when you think about selecting a virtual machine for your application, you can look at the D series uh, V two V two. Uh, don't pick the V one because V two is a lot cheaper. So you pick a D two V one is one core, three and a half GB of RAM and fifty GB of disk, more than enough for most standard workloads for your application. This one costs about uh, $58 a month on, in the C region for a Linux virtual machine because I'm going to assume that most of you all do the deployment on Linux. Okay. So the rest of it, you can actually take a look at the pricing calculator to get a better idea of where, where you want to deploy and what, the, what your cost will actually look like. Okay. For the database, I'm going to just do a same deployment on a, on a D1 V2. Same one call that, but instead of doing the standard uh, storage, which is the hard disk, I'm going to add premium storage to the SSD to improve the I/O rates for the for the database. And also, uh, it's recommended that you deploy these virtual machines in the availability group so that you can, when you do a cluster, and then you can take advantage of the SLA, the 99.95 SLA. For cash. Very simple, you can run a Redis cache or mem cache in a small A1 instance. One core, one, about 2 gig of RAM, 70 GB of disk. So you can use this to run your framework with Redis or mem cache, depending on. Usually, your framework should have a plugin or some, or it's already built into a framework to, to support Redis or mem cache. So this is useful when you scale up your apps. For example, if you're scaling up your sessions, you want to have a, a cache which is shared between all your front end applications. Alternatively, you can use uh, Azure's built-in Redis cache, which is which. For this case, I'll pick a one gig cache because production app potentially might have a lot of sessions. Can scale it up and down depending on what you feel like. We'll, we'll pick standard pricing. That's basic, standard, and premium. So basic, you don't get high availability. For for standard, you get a big, you get a two node replication with high high availability setup. Ninety nine point nine five SLA, same as before. Premium, you get all that and a bit more extra. I need to check the website, but yeah, you get all that and a bit more extra for, for that. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about other considerations when you talk about deploying your app. So uh, as with any, any production setup, you want to achieve some form of high availability. This is, this, there you can deploy the Azure Load Balancer to load balance your, your application between the uh, an availability set. So you can ensure, but when you do this, you need to ensure that each availability set only has machines of the same type. Let's say you deploy all your front-end applications in one availability set and, and your database applications in another availability set. This is so that when it scales up and down, you don't have like a strange number of virtual machines with running different, different things at the same time. Okay. So as with anything, we, we need, you need to talk about like uh, media storage. So there's two ways you can do media storage. You can do media storage using Azure Storage. You can store images, videos, media, big global replicated storage. Use a plugin or service to upload and compress the files and send it to Azure Storage. Azure Storage is basically one for one, same as Amazon S3. Same thing, replication, storage, same. Azure Files is, Azure Files on the other hand is the managed file system that you can attach to your VM itself. You mount the file share on your machines, and then you move your media folder to point to the file share, and then it will rep replicate across all the machines that have the file share attached to it. 
So this is similar to, I believe it's Amazon has an elastic file system on S3 if I'm not wrong, so this is basically the same thing. So uh, we also have Azure CDN, use your Azure CDN with a custom origin, point your static resource to Azure CDN and point to make use of the CDN. After that, finally we have security, keep your installation up to date. Um, and then you can also use a site-to-site -site VPN. We, it's supported in the it's supported when using our virtual networking system. Connect it to your office VLAN if you need to, and then close SSH ports outside your VLAN. So this gives you like point-to-point -point access only. Or uh, also you can deploy a web application firewall in front of your application servers. You can use Barracuda, which is available on Amazon Market uh, Azure Marketplace, and bot security for open source. Lastly, I know that there's uh, concerns about how Azure's uh, GUI is quite finicky and difficult to use. There's a lot of animations and stuff. Sometimes you need a lot of button clicks to, to press what you need to what you need to look for. You can use Terraform, which is by HashiCorp, to go and uh, do your infrastructure management, configure your configure how you want your infrastructure, and then apply it to, to deploy. Also, we also have the Azure Cross Platform CLI. It's available. <coughs> in two flavors. It's available in Node.js and there's a version 2 coming out which is available in Python. This is supported on Linux, Windows, and Mac, all three, all three platforms. So you can use that to run commands to just pull up, like spin up virtual machines and all that purely using the command line without needing to go through the, the GUI at all. Okay. Yep. All right, I've reached the end. Uh, does anyone have any questions? For the Python version, right? Yeah. Do we, if you are using Windows, do you need to install Python? Yes, you need to install Python. Yeah, you can use. Three, yeah. I believe it is two. Yes, it's two. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So you can install the Bash for Windows and then uh, install Python through that. Yes. Okay. Um, anything else? For the Node.js one, are they still gonna? For now, I think they're supporting the. They're continuing to support the Node.js one. Same same installation. npm install dash g azure dash cli for the azure cli. Okay, so you can pick either one to use. Yes, you can pick either one to use. On the okay. file, uh, SharePoint system is it available in Singapore? Already? I need to check. Uh. Because I know Amazon one is not. not yeah, I need to check. I need to. I check that. I, I, I need to check. Yeah. No, the shared file system. Yes. The other thing you can. You can. Can you can roll out your own one also, right? Yes, you can roll out Ceph, uh, Gluster. Gluster, and any of your own. You can roll out your own, of course. Okay. It's uh, entirely up to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? Not uh, okay. Thank you, guys.